Hello, we're here today at the Bears van Berlache uh, with Eric Hermada, who is the curator of a wonderful show, uh, Bugatti, family Bugatti. Uh, how did this show come together originally, Eric? Well, we decided to bring together the, the works of the various Bugatti members. Actually, we were toying with the idea of organizing an, a show about a, a car brand. We did a, a show about Citroën before this one, and uh, that was very nice because it had many, many angles. So we, we wanted to do something similar and uh, because it's, it's, it was a lot of fun to do that. And uh, after toying a little bit with Ferrari, and we came to the idea of doing Bugatti, which is actually a much wider uh, audience you can attract. I mean, there are much more different angles, and the family was so much deeper. The, the, there was so much more background that we decided on Bugatti. Now, the Bugatti. of artistic disciplines, uh, which. Could you go through the family members that you have here? Yes, well, the, the family is very old. It's, they're already interesting and famous Bugatti members dating from the 1600s. Um, but we've, we've focused on the last uh, four, actually a generation, three de generations. It was the fa uh, Carlo Bugatti, the grandfather, the father, who lived uh, in, at the turn of the century and who was at his time very famous uh, furniture designer and uh, sculptor of, of um, silverware. Um, he had two sons, Rembrandt Bugatti, a sculptor of animal bronze animal sculptures, and Ettore Bugatti, the famous car maker. Now, Ettore Bugatti had a son himself called Jean Bugatti, who followed his, his father's footsteps to be a car designer. Now, the cars themselves, which are the feature item here, uh, they represent how many years of car design and why were they so famous? Why were they so well known? Why do we still remember Bugatti? Well, that, that's a lot of questions put into one. Um, they're actually, actually there, are more, there are more pieces of furniture than there are cars and there are also more statues than there are cars. But since the cars are so voluminous, they're, they're so big, they attract most attention. And of course, the name Bugatti is famous because of the cars. Now, Ettore Bugatti started um, off first with other people building cars and then quite soon he started, before the First World War, he already started making his own car, the, the Bugatti Pursan, the, the, the real Bugattis. And he continued doing so uh, until the uh, after the Second World War. Now, of course, he had two breaks: first the First World War and the Second World War. And his son um, was destined to follow in his footsteps as the, the car designer and car producer. But unfortunately, he died in a car accident in 1939. Then the factory was used by the Germans to make uh, to produce uh, munition for uh, for the war. Um, and after the war, Ettore Bugatti had to start all over again. And he was already older. He got sick in 1947. He died and um, his staff, his crew, didn't manage to get the, the plant back into, into working order so they finally went broke. So what you see here is, is cars and car design dating from the 1910s until the uh, 1947, 1940s. or one of the reasons. Uh, why was he famous for that? Well, he, his name was made making, doing races. Now, at that time, he, he first he made his, his first famous victory was the Brescia race uh, in, I think, in 1923. Uh, which he won, and then afterwards with a, what is called a Type 13, the, nicknamed the Brescia, because after winning this race, um, and that type, that type of car was developed into a Type 35. Now at that time, racing cars were quite voluminous. People know this, this huge Bentley racing car, which is like a tank, big, big car, very powerful, and Ettore Bugatti came with his Type 35, which is quite a small, quite slender, quite very narrow, uh, body, you, you barely fit two people next to each other into this car and he entered this into uh, various races and started to get all these victories. He, he actually made more than 450 Grand Prix victories, world victory, and, and he got very very famous with the racing cars. So people, many people bought these cars, you could buy them and race them yourself. I mean that was a time when sports, racing sport was, was very popular. You had hill climbs I mean, in England, in France, people raced, came together and raced their racing cars in, in more organized ways in the Grand Prix in Monaco but also in smaller uh, smaller versions of that. 
So he got so many victories there that he got very famous because of that. And then he decided to, to also make an adapted version of this racing car for more popular use for a touring version, which grew into his more, uh, more well-known um, designs for luxury cars. And in fact, you were telling me at one point he made a luxury car so big that uh, you couldn't even get it into the exhibit here. What was that? Well, the, the whole family was also, always had a, a very famous clientele. They always, they always hung around with kings and, and emperors. And they even, even Carlo Bugatti made uh, furniture and whole room settings for, for the, at that time, international jet set, a, a sleeping room for Lord Battersea in England and all those kind of things. And same thing happened with, uh, with his son Rembrandt Bugatti, who, whose teacher was a uh, Russian prince, Trubetskoy, and also with Ettore Bugatti. He received in his house in Molsheim the King of Belgium, the, the Sultan of Morocco. They all came to his house uh, and enjoyed his cars. Um, so he designed uh, in, in the late 20s, early 30s a car which was called the Bugatti Royale, the, the, the Royal Bugatti, and which was intended for kings. Now that was actually very bad timing because that car came when uh, the, the world crisis was, was going on, when the economy was going very bad. And he produced, I think, 28 engines for these cars, which is a huge engine. Um, but he made only six or seven uh, bodies for that car, so real cars, of which only three were sold. Um, and those six cars still remain. Um, one was never really finished or, or got messed up in the war and was sort of rebuilt. So we now have again seven uh, Bugatti Royales. The remaining engines were used to make um, trains. He, he connected them and made them into a train engine, which was very successful and which was running in uh, France for a long time. Sort of the pre Thalys car, looking very futuristic, very slender built. Now the Bugatti Royale was was a, a huge car. I mean, it was immense. It was more than six meters long, and it was. I've I've talked to someone who actually drove one in in England and said that it's totally unmanageable. You can't you can't really turn it around a corner. And we couldn't get it into this into this exhibition hall. In no way. It was a lot of work to to get these cars into here. People would pay attention. They say. After a while, they say, "How did you actually get them in here?" And we had to we had to to stop the whole street. Street cars couldn't pass anymore to get all these cars in here. But the Bugatti Royale was an impossibility. We do have a, we do have a small version. There's, there was when he when they realized that this huge Bugatti Royale wasn't no one could afford it. At that time, it was three times as expensive as the most expensive Rolls Royce. It was the most expensive car ever. And uh, not so long ago, one. Uh, one of them was auctioned off for 27.5 million D mark, uh, so that's, that's still the most expensive car. Um, but at the time, a sort of smaller version was produced, the Type 44, the, uh, was called the Petit Royale, the Small Royale, and one of those coming from England we have here in the exhibit. Now the exhibit has a the exhibit has a theme that uh, you've set it up. When you come in, you, you get the feeling uh, there's music of the period, there's more than cars, it's sculpture, furniture, as you say. What is the, the concept here? Well, what we try to do is we try to evoke the, the, the spirit of a world fair of the turn of the century. Now, at those times, like now, you have world fairs where um, they brought together the, the arts, arts and crafts, techniques of mankind to, to sort of show what was achieved up till that point. And what you see here is the achievement of, of one family uh, in, in technique, the cars, in art, sculpture, and in arts and crafts, the furniture. Um, and it all represents a, a certain time, kind of, of genius. And the setting we did it in, in this building, which is Berlage's former stock exchange building, it uh, was built in 1903, so that's exactly from that period. And it is also built in the same spirit. Many different artists were brought together here to, to build a sort of a, a, what they call a Gesamtkunstwerk, a, a, a work of art where more people work together, artists, poets, uh, sculptors. And they all built this big hall in which we have now all these different members of the Bugatti family. So um, it's, it's sort of one pavilion from a world fair from the 1900s. Now the family originally was from Italy, 
they moved to France and uh, eventually where was the uh, factory located? Well, they, they come from Milano, so they're, they're really Italians, um, but they all ended up being French. They all were naturalized. Um, the father went to Paris, was very famous in, uh, what I said, in, in the 1900s, uh, really had big triumphs there and lived there for quite a while. His son Rembrandt also moved there, uh, also died there. He committed suicide in the First World War um, after living for a long time in Antwerp. Um, the father also was for a small time uh, the, the mayor of a village in France, of uh, Pierrefonds. Um, so they were really more French than Italians. The factory was located in the Alsace, uh, which, was, which changed hands actually from Germany to France, to Germany back to France again. Um, so the, the, the factory is an, on French soil. Um, and all the Bugatti family members actually in the end were French. So the, the son of Ettore Bugatti is also then called Jean Bugatti and is a Frenchman, died as a Frenchman. Now this show will run from when to when and uh, when's it open? The show is, uh, we do daily uh, from uh, 11 o'clock in the morning until 5 o'clock in the evening um, and we're open every day until March 7th except for New Year's Day. Thank you very much for uh, all that information about the Bugatti family. Uh, it's a wonderful exhibit. I hope uh, you have great success with it. Everyone should come out and see it. Oh, thank you very much. I do hope so.